need it because you love them. Amen. You gave them a do over. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Well, that's the kind of love that God has for us. And regardless to where, I want you to know today, regardless of the kind of mother you have, you can still celebrate Mother's Day. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because some people may feel like, you know, well, my mother wasn't there for me. Or my mother, she put me in foster care. Or my mother walked away. Well, no matter what it is, I don't know if you notice know that or not, but I have met some women who have been abandoned by their bi biological mother, and God has actually put a mother in their place, in their life that will love them better than any other mother could love a child. Amen. So no matter what our situations, we are always in a, in a position that we can praise the Lord for our current situation. Amen. We can praise the Lord for our current status. And on this Mother's Day, I just wanted the mothers to know this morning that God takes your love. The love that you have for your kid, for your children. And he says, that's the kind of love that I have for my people. Is that not good? Somebody say thank you. And, and that mother that I want to look at is uh, 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 Moses' mother. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If we look over in the in the in Exodus 2, we uh Joshabed is Moses' mother. And 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 the scripture tells us, I want to give you a little paint a little picture for you about Moses' mother. The, the scripture tells us that uh how many people in here already know the story of Moses? Okay, so 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 his mother was large with child. In other words, uh, she had carried this baby probably almost, when it gives the account, it's probably almost a full term, right? It says she was large with child, and, 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 and Pharaoh gave a decree that Israel's deliverer was about to be born. And so what he did is, it, now, now you got to understand that that meant that all the slaves were going to be set free if Israel's deliverer, somebody say Israel's deliverer, was about to be born. That means that Egypt was going to, to, to lose all of the, all the free labor that they were receiving, right? And so Pharaoh was upset. He did not want the people of God to be set, the Israelites to be set free because that would mean that his territory wouldn't have anybody to do the work. Somebody say he was lazy. Yeah. Uh, 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 Pharaoh made the decree he, decree, he said, every newly born male child would have to be thrown to the crocodiles in the Nile. Now, I, wanna, I want you to think about Jochebed and what she was going through at that particular moment. I want you to think about it because she was she was pregnant with a child. I want you, can your heart imagine what it's like? She had a boy, she had her son, that every male child would be killed. Well, could you imagine how her heart must have felt? Could you imagine the hurt of carrying this child full term? And somebody's gonna come and hurt her baby. Could you, could you, could you, her child would be a boy. He would be snatched out of his arms, taken out and destroyed. So the scripture said that she hid the baby for three months. Now I want you to think about that. She had it all under control for the first three months. She took her baby. She had her baby boy and she hid him, right? Okay, now, when the baby got three months old, somebody say the cry got a little bit louder. The needs got a little bit more demanding. Mother will think out the box. Somebody say think out the box. She'll think out the box. She knew that if her boy's, her, if her boy's cries were heard, then Pharaoh would come and, and kill her son. So she had to do something a little bit different. She had to, she had to, um, you know, really think about how she was going to save the life of her son. So she took her son and she put her son in a basket. Somebody say in a basket. She put him in a basket and then she covered him with slime and she waterproofed the basket and she put the basket in the river and she sent the basket flowing. Could you imagine taking your
your child and sending your child out in the river. Mm, mm, mm. So many times we try to protect them from things that we will protect them so much that they will miss their destiny. Oh, that was good right there. That they'll miss what God has for, me, for them. Because had she not done that, Moses would never have become the Moses that we know today. Amen. So she had to think differently. She had to be willing to put this child out and entrust him to the Lord. Mm. How many people would be willing, no matter what is going on in the life of your child, when it comes to a point that you know you can't help him anymore, you don't worry about it, you don't cry about it, but you literally come to the place that you trust them to the Lord and it's all right with you. How many mothers can I get to say amen or not? She kept her eye on her. The little basket was floating and I could just see her in my sanctified imagination. Her watching that basket. Her following that basket. But she knew in her heart that God was going to take care of that baby in order to make sure our child is okay. That's point number two. Amen. A mother will do whatever she has to do to make sure that she may not always be able to put her hand on her baby when he's going through. But one thing about it, she keeps her eye on her baby when he's going through. And that's what God wants us to know about his love is that no matter what we go through, sometimes it may not even feel, it may feel like he's not right there with us. Sometimes it may feel like he's not near in the situation with us. But I need you to know this morning, he compares his love to the love of a mother. So that means just like um, Jehoshaphat was watching over Moses, no matter what goes on in your life, he is watching over you. Amen. You to give God some glory. When you, are, when you are a praying mother, God is always listening to your prayers. Do you hear what I'm talking about today? Uh, I, no matter what, what's going on in your life, God is right there and he's listening. We looked at Romans 5. I want you to flip there because I want to share that thing to you, with you because I like to shout it when I read it yesterday. Go, your life like you know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is your protector. Look at uh, Romans 5. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith. Somebody say through faith. Through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So we have access by faith through Jesus. Amen. He opened up the door and we access this through Jesus Christ. He gives us peace through the Lord and access to his peace. And we're granted that grace through Jesus. Am I right about it? Amen. Uh -huh. And it says, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our suffering. So there should always be a rejoice in your spirit when you're going through. Do you hear what I'm saying? There should, I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how messed up your situation seems. Somebody say that I should always have a rejoice in my spirit. Well, and, and, and you can't family. rejoice if you don't have joy. Somebody say, I have joy. I have joy. So, so, so what, what the Bible is suggesting is because you have joy in your spirit, when you get that initial joy that comes from being in relationship with God, you know what I'm talking about? That initial joy that comes from having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That initial joy that comes from trusting in the Lord when you go through something that trust ought to make you rejoice. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I rejoice. I rejoice. Uh, I want you to buy God and your love divinely inspires God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank the you, Lord. Bible suggests that the love of a mother has inspired God to say, I got you. I will protect you. I will bless your enemies. I will bless your, your, your friends and I will curse your enemies. Amen. Those who bless you, I will bless. And those who curse you, I will curse. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Your love. Somebody say, my love. My love. Oh, come on, somebody. Your love has inspired God to know how he going to love his people. Wow. That's good Man. stuff. That's some kind of love that inspires the love of God. But check this out. The Bible says, uh, by faith, it says, through 
whom we have been granted access by faith into this grace which we now stand and we also rejoice in the hope of the glory of God so the hope means that it hadn't actually happened yet so even though we suffer we rejoice in the hope of God's glory you're going to have a problem that's going to come in your life because the Bible says that man's life is short and full of troubles. So you're going to have some troubles, but God said you better rejoice in the hope of my glory. Amen. In other words, you got to be a people that have expectation. Somebody say, I expect God. I expect God. Words, you right. Gotta have, you got to be a people in which, yes, I'm going through. Yes, this thing is rough. Yes, my kids ain't acting right. Yeah, I got two children in jail. But guess what? I rejoice in the hope. Somebody ought to rejoice in the hope. Hey. 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 Shout it. Follow the path that you have <laughs> put in your mind, the vision that you have for your children. But guess what? Don't give up on the children. Rejoice in the hope. Somebody high five three people and tell them to rejoice in the hope. Then you will not be able to rejoice. Amen. So, in other words, if your problem has you in a place that you feel like you can't come out. If you look at that thing and it's so bad that it makes you to be like the old folks say, walk away and shake your head. You know what I'm talking about? And you literally can't envision that that means you have no hope. That means you have no faith. But I don't care how hard that thing gets. I don't care how bad them children get. I don't care how disobedient your children are. You better consistently hope that you will see the glory of the Lord. Amen. And let me tell you about God's glory. God's glory permeates every situation that we should come. Oh, God's glory has no boundaries. God's glory has no limits. God's glory can't be contained. It ain't nothing too hard for the glory of the Lord. So you must always have a heart of expecting to see the Lord's glory. Somebody ought to say, I expect to see it. I expect to see it, amen. I expect to see the glory of the Lord at any moment. People will be wondering what you looking for, why you got your eyes. Oh, this person is going, your child is going through this. Your child is going through that. You got a teenage girl that's pregnant and ain't married. Well, what you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for the glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I believe God for it. Oh, your, your kids may be in jail. They may be doing everything that they shouldn't be doing, but you still looking at them. You still watching them. You still praying over them. Why are you still praying? Don't it look like it's over? Oh, it ain't over until God says it's over. I'm rejoicing in the glory. I have hope that I'm going to see God move over the life of my children. Amen. See, it's easy to celebrate when everything is going good, but can you bless the Lord when your children are acting crazy? Amen. 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 When your children don't do what you trained them to do, what they've been trained up to do, can you still bless the Lord? Amen. Can you still see Amen. the vision that God... See, because every now and then, I, I don't know about you, but see, God gives you vision about your child. When you first look at that little baby and they come out and they all cleaned up and they hand them to you and you look eye to eye, and them, two, them eyes lock in. I mean, it, it's, it's something that no one else will understand. You just look at them and those eyes lock in. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even spend no time together. But it's something innate in the child that makes them just like their earthly daddy. But somebody say, but as a mother. But as a mother. When you begin to see those things that are not like God, you got to start praying the DNA of their heavenly daddy. And you can't start speaking and giving that, 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 that fleshly daddy's generational curses fuel. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because a lot of times our words influence the direction. I don't care. Your negative words influence the direction of your child. You may not realize it, but our children are our children are influenced by the things that we say. 
So when you begin to speak negativity over your child, guess what happened? All that crazy stuff began to happen. Yep. So the best thing to do is say, oh, I see this like that, Daddy, but I'm going to speak and call out the, your Heavenly Father. That's what I'm going to speak to. I'm going to ignore everything that ain't like your Heavenly Father, and I'm going to fuel everything that's like Him. Amen? I'm going to bless. I'm going to speak life into you. I'm going to have expectations of God's glory in your life, and I know that you will be all right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. God's glory. So, so when you rejoice in the hope, uh, we we don't have no problems. That's where I was going. We don't have no problems rejoicing when everything look right. But rejoicing in the hope means that ain't nothing going right. Because you don't have to hope if it's going right. Am I right about it? Man. The hope comes in on a happen. It is inevitable. I don't care what the world says. We got to stop thinking that what the world, what we see is what's inevitable. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I am calling down every promise of my God and I am speaking it over the life of my children and his glory is inevitable. It is going to happen. I hope that's it. I hope. I know without a shadow of a doubt I got my hands up because I expect to see the glory. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And that's why my hands be up in, in worship. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, people be wondering how you still preaching, how you still praising out of everything that you're going through. Why you still know I got my hands up because I'm expecting God's glory to drop down over my life. Amen. But Amen. I can't catch it if my hands are down. I can't catch it if my hands are closed. The only way I'm going to get what God has for me is if I expect it and put my hands up to show God rain down. Amen. Rain down your glory. Somebody say rain down your glory. Rain down your glory. Okay, right now, rain down your healing. If you have a sick child, say, God, rain down your healing. Rain down your healing. Do it right now. Do it right now. Hallelujah. If you have a child that's addicted, hey. say, rain down your deliverance. Rain down your say, deliverance. Do it right now. Right now. I don't care what you're going through. Hey. I don't care what your child is going through. Hey. If you have a child with learning disability, Come on. say, God, rain down. Rain your down. Lord, rain and do it right now. Yes. So tell them I expect to see your glory. I expect to see your glory. If you have a child going through depression, say, rain down your joy. Rain down your joy. Oh, child, do it right now. Hallelujah. I need you to rain it down. Yes. I need to see your glory. Yes. I expect your glory. Yes. And my hands are held up. Yes. So you can rain it down. Yes. And Lord, I right, now, right now, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to Somebody say, I need to receive. I need to receive. Yes. I need to receive your glory. I have a spirit of expectation that I will see your glory. Man. He's a present God. And I was going through some things with, with Destiny uh, last week. She, you know, got a little issue with her leg. And all week long, we were in the hospital. Hey, Destiny. And we... Um, <coughs> And, and for me, I knew I had this Mother's thing, this Mother's Day um, celebration on Saturday that we were going to, that we had planned for the mothers of the church. But I want to go ahead of myself. <coughs> I, Destiny got sick. She doesn't have insurance. Hmm. Okay. She said, talk about the five days. <laughs> to the beginning. I talked to a lady that was going through something that I've been helping. I've been really involved in her situations in her life, and I've been helping her. And so we came to a place, as I was helping this young lady, <clears throat> she needed something, and I, I set everything up for her. I said, hey, I got this for you. Um, it's set up. Uh, all you have to do, I got the money for you. <coughs> She, the lady had given me some money. I didn't put it. She gave me some money for something. I didn't use it for what she gave it to because I knew she was going to need it. So I set it up on the side. 
And she came, and sure enough, she needed it. And so I told her, I said, okay. She called me. She said, oh, this is going on. That's going on. I said, okay, don't worry about it. I got you. I said, what I will do, I said, I have, you remember that money you gave me? I kept it. I said, and I will get it for you, and I will bring it to you. And so the lady said, oh, awesome, awesome. I'll be able to work out what I'm going to. I said, okay, good. So the Holy Spirit said, don't do that. The Holy Spirit said, go work it out. Make sure she has what she needs. Go tell her you got it. I'll take care of it and everything. So I went. I called this this place that I dealt with, that our church deals with. We we do ministry at this at this hotel. And I called the manager. I said, Hey, this is Pastor Wood. You know, um, you know, we do this that, and the other. She said, Oh yeah, Pastor Wood. What you need? I said, I have a situation. Can you provide a room? I got the money for the person. I can pay, you know, a week for them. Can you work this out for me? Because they usually don't have anything. She said, you know what? I have a place for you in 45 minutes. Bring them on. And I said, okay. So I went and got the person. And I was talking to them. I said, hey, I found a place for you. I said, I got it. You'll have this until this money comes through. You're going to be okay. And so the person said, I don't want to do that. I ain't doing that. And I said, okay. Now, I, this was the end of the month approaching. And I said, you know what? I said, you're not going to get me for the next five days. I said, because I'm going to be working on the end of the month. I am not available by phone for these five days. I mean, I was just pouring it on because I needed that person to take this because this is going to be gone if you don't get it. And I don't know what's going to happen to you. So, so I said, for the next five days, you're going to be on your own. I'm not going to be able to come. I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm going to be out the box. You ain't going to see me. Don't call me. I may not answer. I mean, I, I painted it thick. And they said, no, I don't want that. I don't want to do that. So I said, okay, well, here's your money. I'm just letting you know. I was like, uh, what you call it? The blood is not on my hand. <laughs> and I went on about my business. Saturday. This was probably maybe uh, Thursday, something like that. Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Des got sick. She got an infection in her leg. And I didn't hear from this person that whole, all that whole time. I never heard anything. And then when Des got sick, we had to be rushed out to Scottish Rite Hospital. And I'm sitting in the hospital with Destiny. They admitted her, and they had to do two surgeries on her leg and all this. And I'm sitting there. Day three, the doctor came in and said, oh, you won't be leaving here for another two days. And I'm sitting on the, on the thing, and I said, that's going to be five days. I had already said, I am not going to be available for anything for the five days. The next one. The fifth. I said, it takes me five days after the first. I will not be able to be available to you until the fifth. Do you know that I was at that hospital until the fifth? Yep. Oh, wow. Way out there, unable to be, and the phone was, I was like, I'm sorry, I already told you that I ain't nothing I can do. But God had already set it up. He gave the person the warning. He said, I got your provision right here for you. I made a way for you. All you got to do is listen to me. And I didn't realize that he had already set me up so I wouldn't even be worried about it. So when I was sitting over in the hospital and I couldn't get there, I sat in peace because I had already told you. Amen. I didn't know my five days were going to be working on this. I thought I was going to be working on my accounts. But for five days. Then the next thing. Now, I didn't have insurance for destiny. I'm in the hospital. We're at, um, at Kennesaw, Kennesaw, at the emergency room. And I knew I didn't have any insurance. I said, Lord, I began to think about it. I said, let me pray. I want to tell you, mothers, your prayers go straight to God. Amen. When you are a righteous, praying, believing, faithful mother, here we go. Don't worry. Pray. Because God changes your situation. Amen. So my baby laying there on the business. Stretcher, and I said, God, 
I don't have any insurance over this child right now. We're in the process of trying to get the insurance straightened out. I don't have insurance. I said, but God, I know you own everything. And we had just rehearsed everything is yours, excellent. All the earth is yours, everything is yours. That's what we sang, uh, you know, for, for Sunday. So I had just rehearsed that. It was in my spirit. When I began to worry, I remembered that everything belongs to God. It says, all the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The fullness, that means everything. So I laid my hands on this. I said, everything belongs to you, God. She doesn't have insurance, but you own this hospital, God. I need her to have the I need her to have the blessed assurance that you will cover everything, God. And Lord God, I need her to be treated like she has the best insurance because she has this blessed assurance. Let her get the best care, God. And I prayed over that girl. And the doctor came running up in there. He said, we got to get the test for you. I mean, everything. She was she was literally fast forwarded through the system. Wow. Wow. We, the, the emergency room was full of kids. When we walked in, we was like, oh, my goodness. Guess what? Destiny was fast forwarded. Amen. She was fast forwarded. Why? Because I knew who to call. Okay. I ain't called nobody for no loan. I ain't called nobody. Oh, yeah, no. I called on the one who owned everything. Amen. And sometimes we forget that we have access and authority. And he owned it and you're his child. Guess what? You heir to everything that he has. Thank you, God. That's the second miracle. Now let me tell you the third one. So the people say, they did the ultrasound. This thing is to the bone. We don't have to, uh, we, we don't know what it means, but I can tell you this infection is to the bones and it looked like MRSA, which is a real bad infection. So we're going to have to do this, that, and the other and see what happened because you know when the infection gets in the bone, that's a big deal. Amen. So we had to do the, um, they did that through the ultrasound. The next morning we had to do the MRI. Y'all, she got an MRI and didn't have no insurance. But you know, because they'll send you home until you figure it out. Because she had blessed assurance. We didn't have to worry about man's insurance. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody ought to get that. So I'm just telling you how he moved. So that morning, God said, get up and begin to pray. And I didn't want to just pray what I wanted to happen. Because that's what we do. We pray what we want. I got his word. Because guess what? God cannot deny his word. Okay. So I went to the Bible and I pulled out every scripture that had to do with healing of the bones and the flesh. Amen. And I began to lay hands on that girl. I rubbed her from the top to the bottom and I was saying this, God, your word said, I had my cell phone because I ain't going to pretend like I knew it by heart. I didn't. But I had my cell phone, thank you Lord for Google, and I had Googled all them scriptures and I was saying, Lord, your word says that you will change even our bones, God. If we have sickness and disease in our bones, God, your word says that you will transform it, God, and you will heal it. The I am the God that healeth thee. And I started praying that thing over her and and she woke up, she went after I got through praying. She said, I, she was telling somebody, my grandma must have prayed over me. And I went to sleep, woke back up, she was still praying. Nurses came in, she was still praying. She prayed over me for a long time. That's because God was moving. That's because God was changing. Went to the MRI. Yeah, went by ambulance. They took her by ambulance over there. They, they had the ambulance come with the sirens. They said, we can send it up with sirens. We need her to get there. They ran that MRI. Doctor came. I wasn't there. I think I was going. Gigi said, my ain't nothing in the bones. Wow. And matter of fact, it's superficial. What are you doing? It's superficial. The people said, there's nothing here but bone. This is where it is. So they automatically figured that it went into the bone because there was no tissue. 
It had nowhere else to go. Them folks said it was superficial. Wow. wow. Then the lady was like, I don't know. I said, I just want it. <laughs> what do you do? So God is that kind of God. He is a person. <laughs> and you know what all it takes what is do for us to believe. It takes for a mother to pray. A mother to get down on her knees and talk to God. Don't be afraid to call God's word out over your situations because God answers our prayers. Amen. They Amen. are divinely inspired. 